A very good morning to you. How are you doing? And welcome to Life and Style Inspiration Monday on Motivate Today. We are talking to the CEO Sipla. Now, this guy is the brains behind Talanta Mtani show on KTN every single Friday at 8 p.m. Now, he says this is not just a talent search. This show has a story behind it. Ever heard about intellectual property law? Let's find out more about that. Maurice, thank you so much for creating time for us. As as you know, it's interesting seeing you like this because when, when I started checking you out eh, on, face, on Facebook and then on Google, I was like, the stories here and what I'm about to do are two different people. Let me just go to the images and see <laughs> if it's the same person. Because now how so it's like, you know Shalanta show? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know it. So now the guy behind that is the guy you're going to talk to. I'm like, oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. You started from down there. Like you, you went out of the country to study. You, yeah, were, you were focused on what you wanted to do. Yeah. And you actually bumped into what you're doing now when you were studying for something totally different. Yeah. Which is interesting. Maybe you could take us back. Mm. Not very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah a bit tight back. Yeah. All right. So I'll start from way, way back. Yeah? Starting guys. from school. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I went to boarding school. I, I was at uh, St. Mary's Mosocho. Okay. Uh, that's why I learned my basketball skills uh, from there. I, I love basketball very much. That's okay. why. In fact, do you we get do. to play? Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. I did play basketball. But, 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 so I'd play a lot in school, but when they are going for the tournaments, yeah. I'd be out there carrying their bags and their water. Oh, I never yeah, got totally. to play. I ah. never got. I wasn't that good. But hey. Ah, okay. Anyway, yeah. so I uh, started off at um, Saint Mary's Mosocho yeah. in uh, Kisi. Mm -hmm. um, but they, by that time, going to a boarding school, was in Kisi, eh? yeah. a bit tough. But my parents were um, very keen on giving good education, mm. uh, regardless of whatever the place was. And uh, for that, I value that very much. In fact, it's one of the uh, positive attributes that my parents instilled in me, education. So I went to St. Mary's Mosocho, then came to Saints, St. Mary's uh, School here in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, did relatively well. Uh, you know, that was a school of Wenjoy Osana. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, not relatively well, did averagely well. Yeah. So after Saints, uh, because of my, I'd always wanted to be a lawyer um, from my childhood days, all the time. I just always wanted to be a lawyer, but for the wrong reasons at that time. Wait, uh, what uh, reasons? I loved arguing. <laughs> so my perception of being a lawyer was that uh, I can just argue keep, myself just out of a situation. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I always wanted to be a lawyer, mm -hmm. uh, but the grades I achieved when I was here at um, at school in St. Mary's yeah. were not enough to take me to law school in Kenya. And at that time, I think it was 1991. Um, there are few campuses that are open in law. Not like now. Now you know there are several campuses that yeah. you can go and study law and everything else. Uh, so I made the decision to um, travel to India. And again, uh, that time India was, everybody was like, hey, uh, do you really want to go to India? Yeah. But because of my uh, childhood dream, uh, my passion, uh, and by the way, this is something which I still hold uh, very dearly. I think in life you should always uh, strive to uh, achieve and do whatever okay. it is that you want yeah. exactly. Otherwise, you'll never be satisfied. That's true. So for me, I felt that, uh, look, the only place that one we could afford, my family could afford to take me to study law was India. Uh, was India. Mm -hmm. And I uh, said, Nepeleke uh, A tough place, but hey. Uh, How old were you? Uh, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, all 19. alone in a foreign country. Yeah. Oh, but they, India is another community of Kenyans there. Ah, okay. So <laughs> it was like another small Kileleshu, another small uh, Kisumu. Okay. So we were several, we were many of us in India. It was actually a lot of fun. Okay. So I went, uh, my initial plan when I was going actually, uh, yes, it was to study law, but when I got there, uh, India has another system of buy one, get one free, but, but not in that way. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, this is what happens. So in India, you can study law in two forms. One, you can do it as a postgraduate. Okay. So you do another course, uh, BCO, BA, whatever it is. Then you do law. And if you do that one, uh, the law course will take three years. Mm -hmm. If you go and do, the second option is to do law straight. And if you do it straight, it takes five years. So the choice here was uh, whether to stay in India for six years yeah. or five years. But the advantage was that if you stay for six years, you mm -hmm. get two degrees. Two That's why I meant buy one, get one free. In other words, oh, okay. um, <laughs> yeah, see, you couldn't know what So uh, I opted to do BCom first because I loved maths. Uh, my dad was an accountant, and so the maths thing is in, in, in the blood. Okay. So I opted, opted to do BCom first for three years. Then I did law for three years and eventually graduated. And voila, 
came back to Kenya yeah. uh, in one piece <laughs> and then got into the law school, Kenya School of Law, uh, did my uh, Kenya School of Law exams and passed uh, one of the uh, uh, really one of my proud moments in life, honestly, <laughs> because Passing I did, path. yeah, yeah, because uh, trust me, those are the exams eh, that I went through, eh, were a bit uh, challenging, yeah. And I think also because of uh, the system where maybe you learn too many things that you probably don't have an interest in, for example, I think even now it's more focused, like if you're in the arts, you know, you study you more focus arts related, on that. exactly. So when I got to school of law, because it's, I love the law, yeah. um, we're in a class of about 300, 400 uh, students, uh, all mixed, Britain, uh, University of Nairobi, India, all over the country. Um, and out of about 400 of us, just about 30 uh, passed the first time. And I was amongst the 30. And I was not, it was really a proud moment that yeah. uh, I was able to pass the exam um, at that one, one time. And that actually re reaffirmed my passion and desire to always be a lawyer. Beautiful. Okay, and that's the beginning of my law uh, career uh, and journey. Career, yeah. uh, when did you come about uh, you know, intellectual property? Because it wasn't big when you came, when you started talking about it or creating awareness about it. It's not something that Kenyans mm. knew or even, well, even if they knew, they didn't know how to handle it or go about it. Yeah, true. And it was almost by chance, uh, if I may use that word. So, uh, coming back from India, uh, some of my, my best friend uh, was the late uh, Big Kev. Remember Kevin yes. Ombajo? Big Kev. Yes, uh, he was my best friend. Uh, when I came back from India, uh, my family had moved uh, from Kenya. Uh, I lost my dad in 1991, just before I went to, yes. to India. And uh, Kevin's family sort of adopted uh, me. So they became like my family. Oh, and the dad became like our dad. Um, after 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 I went to India, a couple of years after I went to India, my mom, my bro, my sister, everybody moved to the US. So basically I was alone in Kenya. So when I came back after studying, um, after graduating uh, with my law degree, uh, I basically didn't have a family in Kenya and I didn't have a place to stay. Imagine landing in the airport and you're like, oh, okay, What's where do I go? Me up? Where are you going to go? And then I remember another time, most of my friends were telling me, why would you want to go back to Kenya? Uh, no family, uh, employment, it's tough. Yeah. No, and I was like, it was easy to just go to the states. Yeah, and and for me again, just the passion of wanting to practice law and yeah. practice commonwealth law in Kenya, I said no. Let me just go back and hustle. Yeah. So uh, that's again another big uh, decision in my life where I said no, no. I'm just coming back to Kenya, and I think I can I can make it in Kenya. Yeah. Um, this let me just mention something. There's something I firmly believe in. Um, Mark nine twenty three. In fact, mm -hmm. on my WhatsApp, it's there. Uh, if you believe. In something if you actually believe by the it will happen it's just true. i've just said it in a simple simple yeah. way it's in it's biblic, biblili, eh, bi biblical biblical <laughs> yes. and i've seen scholars and other um, you know scientists or whatever talking about that that yeah. if you actually believe something with all your heart and believe not not just believe and say okay i'll make it no yeah. believe it and actually Have a conviction push. Of the spirit yes and then started. do yeah. whatever it takes to to, to get there yeah. or to get it. Okay, it, it will happen. Yeah. And uh, I've lived like that even up to now. I'll, I'll give you some more uh, instances of me just believing. Okay. Just believing and guys are looking at me like, wow, why, why, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> just believing and working towards it. Imagine, even if you don't believe in God. I eh? think the There's universe some, just comes okay, into that's place. That's what I did to say. Yeah, you it does. know about it that? Just, eh? Yes, I do. Yeah, I yes. do. I so do. that even, for, even if you don't believe in God, yeah. there's an energy just comes into you. Yeah. And it just takes you there yeah but they, that's that's how I they align the universe aligns yourself yeah. itself happy. to whatever it is that you've put your mind yeah. to which what is do you amazing. know about that but it, it's, <laughs> that thing is real it's, it's true it's real I know. yeah so uh india alone kenya alone. nobody but i'm like no mm -hmm. i'll make it as a lawyer okay let me just go to kenya let me just go back and i did okay. came back landed here where am i going to stay so i called him uh, big kev hey kev uh, okay, I'm back. Eh? Uh, <laughs> so, Savaskota, uh, uh, can we share? Uh, imagine he says, yes, just come over. And he was sitting in the Savaskota in the house. Uh, yeah. One bed, we shared a bed. Old men, any grown ups, eh? big men, but we were sharing a bed just because he was my friend. He was my friend. He said, look, just come stay here. Yeah. I mean, we'll just make it. So, uh, and that's how I'm just giving the story of how I got into intellect, inter entertainment law intellectual, or intellectual property law. Yeah. So Kevin at that time was heavily in the entertainment space. Uh, they used to do 
uh, the Miss Kenya pageants. Yes, Miss, you remember those ones? Yeah. Miss Kenya beauty pageants, uh, Miss Tours in Kenya. They had a show called uh, the Showdown and you know stuff like that. And they were actually for me, I think they were the pioneers. Apart from Homeboys at that time, the, the company was called Shilton, where mm -hmm. it was Big Kev, Big Ted, yeah. uh, Licky Odera. Mm -hmm. and a guy called Dixon Mujiri, mm -hmm. uh, who now have successful companies uh, separately. Uh, okay. I think Ted runs the main event company, yes, Dixon, main event. Uh, Dent Entertainment, Leaky, Pampazuka, I think, and then Bikev, True Black. Yeah. So, but that's how they started, the four of them. Uh, as young men, friends, um, they were all in the entertainment space, and, but doing the beauty pageants and stuff like that. So it wasn't as big, but it was in that, you know, in that space. So, uh, I come, meet Kev, and you know, you know we just are hanging out together and this is before when you come from uh, studying law you first have to go to the school of law here in Kenya. yeah so there's a waiting period before you get into the school of law so most people go for pupil legends you know stuff like that yeah. for me i opted to just hang out with my friend and see what he's doing and you know just see what comes out of it so as we hang out uh, I, I realized that look hmm, so this is entertainment. Eh? This is what these guys are doing. Eh? Yeah. And then their friends at that time were Gidi Gidi Maji Maji, mm. uh, Darlene P, yeah. uh, Hearthstone, you know, so it was the times of Kina Ted Josiah, Kina David Murethi and all these other people. And these guys were all big. So I'm hanging around celebrities basically. You know, famous people, when you walk around and we're in a matatu with Darlene P and everybody's like, eh? okay, taka so marebo. So, you know, that's <laughs> so on, so 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 yeah. All these guys, they're big and, you know, so uh, what struck me as very strange was uh, we're all in a matatu together, <laughs> we don't have bus fare. And you are the celebrity. And you are the celebrities, and mm. I'm like, mm, this Something doesn't just yeah, doesn't make sense. Yeah. And that's what uh, ignited my interest mm. in entertainment at that time. And I looked back and I saw, look, what about, how come in the US uh, all the big musicians are living well, even the ones who are, who are deceased, uh, the Beatles and you know, whoever it yeah. is. How come they're living well? How come the entertainment industry is thriving so much there and not here? But this is way back in 98. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, that's how many years ago? 20? How many? 98? Yeah. yeah. So way back. Uh, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> We're not having that conversation. <laughs> so yeah. So I'm talking about 1998. So yeah. if, you, if you even look back in Kenya, where, where we were in 98, that's why even when, you, when I was thinking of entertainment companies, I think by that time it was just homeboys and now Shield Entertainment. Blah few mm -hmm. uh, artists just you know a couple of them uh, the media houses I mean it was the it was really small it was small. really small really yes small. Mm -hmm. so I look back and I saw look how come it's uh, the entertainment industry is doing so well uh, people are earning living mm -hmm. living from from this you know and here I mean it's just uh, struggles 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 so I started doing my research at that time before I joined law school I started doing my research to see what is it about the entertainment industry uh, that is not um, Try with. And by the way, I was looking at entertainment generally, not just musicians. Yeah. Uh, some of some of my friends, because we're in the beauty, uh, because we're doing beauty pageants, some of my friends now are models and stuff like that. And as I said, this was just part of from the research that I did to see what what structures and policies need to be put in place. And my but this went on for a while. You working oh. alongside, but then eventually yes, you became the CEO. Oh yes, yes. And and actually, that's because of working alongside. Yeah. Uh, when the vacancy fell uh, through. Uh, they advised me to apply, to apply and they knew that hey this girl has always been yeah. there that's why they because you're already doing whatever they need to be doing from yes. out there Emma, whatever support systems they need from out there so you understood yes, what exactly. it meant to be a ceo of this amazing corporation yeah. so <laughs> you got in and you were there for a while you set yes. up really really amazing uh, you know we're getting closer <laughs> to you <laughs> You know, we're getting closer uh, to... So you were there. How long were you there for? Yeah, about nine years. About uh, nine years. I joined in 2007, mm -hmm. uh, December. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and I can see your smile like, <laughs> like when I left. So, before we get there. So, I joined in 2007. Yeah. When I joined, by the way, uh, if you look at the records, eh, yeah, um, uh, the, comp the society was doing about uh, nine, ten million shillings a year. Yeah. Um, royalties being paid out were, I mean, very little. Um, a thousand, two thousand shillings. The membership was at, I think, a thousand members or less. Mm. Uh, the enforcement, the enforcement and licensing was very uh, minimal. The compliance, so not many broadcasters were paying, not many users were paying. There were no systems, the structures, the staff. Uh, I think we had only two or three offices. So uh, it was not. It was not. The truth is, it was not. Um, it was not a company that was doing well. 
And uh, one very interesting thing I did was this. Uh, have you ever walked to an interview and the first thing you present in the interview is a strategic plan of how you're going to shape or reshape. So before you ask me anything, just yes. check this out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And uh, I actually did another interview later with some other uh, um, newspaper and they were like, how do you work in yeah, how do you with do a that? strategic plan? And but I think you knew because you'd worked with them for so long, you yeah, knew yeah. this is what they need. Yeah. And they That's also knew we were bringing him on because we know what he has. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you were pretty confident about what you had created for the company and you probably knew. So what if they didn't <laughs> give you the job and just take the plan with them? <laughs> and th that question was asked. Oh, like but you're a lawyer. Me. Yes. <laughs> and no, for me I said, look, uh, even if I don't get this job, eh, yeah. uh, my passion is just to, uh, just to help. Yeah. Because my friends, uh, my clients were in the industry. So yeah. I said, look, even if I don't get a job and you find that this is useful, uh, go so ahead, use it, and I'll even be available to uh, consult and I'll continue and what, what I was doing yeah. before. That's the, honestly, that's how that's how I took it. I, wow. I took it. So nine years in, you yeah. used your strategic plan, right? Yes. It worked to the letter. It did it work, to the, and it worked tremendously from okay. ten million to six hundred million shillings Whoa. a year. Uh, yeah. You know, as in that's uh, the membership. From, Membership from 1,000 to 15,000. Okay. We were in Africa, when I joined we in Africa, I think we were number 40, 41, 42. Uh, amongst the African countries, I left when we were number three. So grew it from number 40 to number three. You know, distributions increased. We were doing, we were doing very well. Um, uh, because again of the structures that were set up, uh, things like now Skiza, uh, which is under mechanical rights and all these yeah. other things now started thriving and now it's a 10, 20 billion shilling uh, industry. So the effect is, it's all not just over. even in uh, the company itself, it's what the broadcasters start paying, what uh, the media and houses are paying. And this also, you know, translates to the musicians, to the artists, because the exactly. more <coughs> you get into skis and all of these other things, you also get money from exactly. them. So it's, yeah. it's, it goes down to everyone who's yeah. part of this amazing yeah. the industry. The checks we are issuing when I was living in uh, MCSK after the nine years, 30 million shillings, 40 Whoa. million shillings to musicians. And which is why uh, this space, the entertainment space, eh, but it's actually a very serious, it is. very it serious is. Uh, it is. Uh, industry. Actually one of the leading industries in the world. Mm. So we just need to tap right into it in the right way. So you resign. Yes. <laughs> you walk away from this amazing <laughs> strategic plan you had. Um, and then what? Like what happened after that? Uh, so bees follow the honey. I mean, because of the money that was now coming in, yeah. um, a lot of issues um, came up with that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just feel bad uh, because uh, these issues were totally misunderstood. Yeah. And the worst part about maybe Kenya is uh, people like to believe, you know, whatever, whatever they believe. The media, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever is just put out. <laughs> yeah. uh, but luckily enough for me, I feel a lot of my friends who knew me, who knew what we had done, uh, believed in what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, and even after, after I resigned, a lot of my clients are still musicians. Uh, I'm even still setting up some of companies, uh, the next CMOs, I'm consulting for some of them. And uh, because again of that interest, uh, it now developed into uh, talent. Uh, now, uh, as I was living, I, uh, I'd set up an NGO uh, a couple of years ago uh, called the Center for Intellectual Property Law, Advocates and Research International, yeah, CIPLA. CIPLA. Uh, and now through CIPLA, I went on doing my work. Uh, even after leaving MCSK, doing work related to intellectual property. And the intellectual property basically covers areas like uh, copyright, trademarks, patents, and so on and so forth. Uh, and corporate being, like for Kenya, corporate being very, very key and one of the areas where I have a passion. Uh, so we decided to continue uh, in that space. Um, one of the things actually I did was to run a TV station uh, Immediately after I left MCSK, MCSK, I was working for a TV station called TVC, TVC mm -hmm. Kenya. Yeah. After that, I worked for one called uh, Triple P TV, a music channel uh, that is yeah. still running up now. And from there, I uh, developed an interest in talent, uh, leading up to now what we have as Talanta Mtani. Yeah. Uh, Talanta Mtani is a very interesting story, if I may say so. Okay. Uh, I'm sitting in my office one day, uh, working, and I'm looking out, eh, I see a couple of young guys, uh, dreadlocks, uh, bandanas what you, what and stuff saying, like that. What are you yeah. saying about artists? <laughs> 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 and maybe they're not artists, just hold on. So I'm just seeing some young guys uh, at the garden. Uh, mm. Day one, they sit there whole day. Day two, day three, I ask one of my guys, hey, I've been seeing some guys waiting here. Who do they want to see? So the, my guy says they want to see you. And I'm ah. like, okay, why haven't you brought them to me? Yeah. And they say, ah, how are you going to know? How are you going to know? How are you going to know? How do you know? And that's Whoa. the Kenya that we're in, where 
you prejudge people. Yeah. Uh, two, people like to help um, either people they know or where they get a favor. But not if you saw someone who maybe a beggar or someone who's not, you know, able to fend for himself. People usually don't want to, you know, which is which is a wrong mentality. I don't I don't I don't live like that. So I told him no, just let them come and talk to us. Let's see what they want. Let's see how we can help them. In fact that's the culture I like to build in my company where Kusaidiana. And even starting from where, uh, when I got my interest in, uh, in intellectual property, it was because I saw my friends yeah. uh, not doing well, and because I wanted to help them, that's how I got in there. You see, at that time, it wasn't even doing well, we're not getting that paid, we're doing it for free, but just to say, dear them, I said, hey, same thing, I said, let's just let's talk to them and see what it is that they want. Yeah. So we sit, talk, uh, they were called by the, the Royal Gang, uh, that's, that's what the name was, and they tell me, Marie, so we've been wanting to see you. Uh, I'm a DJ, I'm a dancer, I'm a musician, I'm a what and what and what. Nasin to be a computer, Nasin to make what you channel echo, and we just want to do something in the channel. And I said, I don't think that will be of use to you, but what I see here is a DJ, a dancer, a musician, and all of those. Mm. And I know there are more of you from where you are. Yeah. And I got the idea, these are talented guys. And because, as I said, my family is best in the U.S. I've been into the U.S. before and there's a show called uh, America's Got Talent, which yeah. does very well there. And I was like, with the talent that we have here, why don't we do something not similar, um, but, okay, slightly similar, but with a Kenyan <laughs> twist. Okay. And I said, guys, uh, let's think of a name, let's think of something which uh, would be of impact to you here, to those after you, yeah. and even for the future, so that we can at least, cool. uh, yeah, as, as opposed to just being on a TV channel and, you know, just appearing on TV just for fame. So uh, we sat back and thought of what name do we come up with? Um, so I went back home, slept over it and said, look, uh, this is talent. How many was it? Talanta. And that's how the name uh, came up. Uh, immediately, uh, within a week, uh, we had done the auditions for the first season. Uh, that's last year. And again, from what I said, Mark 923, uh, no money. Uh, we just, I just felt, look, this is something which I think can make an impact on people's lives. This is something which I think can be good for the community. This is something which I think can be good for the creative space. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and do it. But then we just started it off with nothing. And that's when I, people are looking and said, how are you going to finance this? How are you going to run this? And I said, let's just do it, it will happen. <laughs> Believe you me, uh, in the first season of Talent Tani, Guys just volunteered. The judges, Antonio Sol, Jalango, uh, who else was there? Uh, Seth Gore, volunteered to judge. Uh, the MCs, Shafiweru, volunteered. Uh, venues were being given for free, and we were able to shoot first, the first season on a zero budget, budget. because wow. everybody just volunteered because of what we were doing. And this is the concept. Uh, Talent of Tani is not just a talent search, sure, yeah. it's a talent search and an empowerment program. In this way. Okay. Um, now, you have youth uh, who are talented. I know the time is shh. <laughs> so, you have uh, youth who are talented. And by the way, there are many, many youth, uh, especially from the, and most from the low income areas, yeah. who are extremely talented. Uh, look at Rabbit uh, from the yeah. Look at Churchill uh, from, from the Mta. Mta. Look at Jalango. Look at DJ Shiti. Mm. Look at uh, Giuliani, uh, yeah. Juakali. All these yeah. guys eh, from the Mta, talented, but they were able to get that break and make it. And by the way, if we have this interview again after about a year or two, you'll see that Mark 923, you'll see that impact having been created where I know we'll have the country government now working with us so that we go and get more youth, empower more youth, train more youth, uh, build infrastructure for them to train. So as we come to, this end, to the end of this conversation, you know, those <coughs> mantras and philosophies that you live by, what's your, like, you know, they say parting shot, but you know, a mantra, right. philosophy, something, and this is your camera. All right. Um, you cannot uh, change the world, but you can change the world for one person. Wow. Listen. Yeah. And if, if again we all believe in that, believe me, it will make us take that extra step to even just change that world for one person. And that's what we're trying to do with Talent of Dani. Our goal uh, for season two is to, uh, um, to have at least 30 of the contestants employed somewhere. Understand? That 30 is that, that one person's world that yeah. will change it. We can't change it, we can't employ everybody, everybody. we can't get everybody yeah. employed, but yeah. we start with the 30. Uh, and we're grateful here, I must say, to the Swedish Embassy, who have come in to support uh, Season 2 and are willing to support Season 3, uh, to CSUDP, Civil Society for... Uh, CSUDP, 
civil society for urban development platform okay. to raise awareness who have also supported us and to club soda who have come into and who believe in what what it is that we're doing in atlanta and are willing to support us Absolutely. so we uh, we would want to make that change um, in people's lives yes. and starting with the baby steps and as i said uh, it's a ripple trust effect me. you change mine i change someone else's life so 30 people the, the impact the, is amazing exactly in two, th two, three years from now, you'll see. Absolutely. It will be just be the same story of, okay, we had this interview when it was just starting off, yeah. and I'm happy actually we did this yeah. today when it's still, yeah, you know, and we'll see the effect uh, later. Thank you uh, so much for creating time for us, Maurice. You sorry. know we could have this conversation all day. Yeah, you know I know. Uh, <laughs> producer, producer? <laughs> not a chance, not a chance. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your time. And you've been mentioning Mac 923 the whole time, so I decided to read it out in full, what it says. So... Mark 9.23 says, Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. So he's a strong believer of this verse, and I think it's one thing that keeps him going over and over again. I don't know if it changes your life or it makes you believe in those dreams stronger than you did before, but all things are possible to him who believes. So go ahead, believe. It's possible. You can do it. But you need to start. So you can't say you believe and you're not doing anything about it, which is something that Maurice also mentioned, that you believe and work towards it relentlessly. It will fall in line. This has been Motivated. I've been talking to the CEO, Sipla, Maurice, and uh, we're taking a very short commercial break. When we come back, we have Catherine Wangi on Books and Blogs. Let's backtrack to where you said you have white hair. You are playing. It's a wealth. No, it's a wealth. Yeah. You don't have white hair. You're I think 23. It's inheritance thing you are 23. Yeah, I have one strand <laughs> of white hair. <laughs> Unless you die.